Well, welcome, Rock Church. We're so glad that you're joining us tonight. Uh, I have our Rock leadership team here with us tonight to discuss a little bit what's going on in our world right now. You know, we have the government saying stuff. As we know, we have the Word of God, our scripture that tells us how we're supposed to live. And we have questions coming up, like why are, are, aren't we essential in what's going on? Opening the church, all of these questions are popping up, and we want to address some of those for you tonight. So, yeah. Pastor Rick, you had some scripture you wanted to share and just some of yeah. what your heart? Yeah, I think... <clears throat> the you know there's the big push uh, that's going on in Southern California for churches to open up yeah. May 31st, um, and I, I I've struggled with it because I go back and forth. I go from you know I'm human, so I have opinions, uh, and I look at I look at what's going on in the government and everyone's the conspiracy theories and all this stuff and people's anger. You know, yes. let's open up, and then I swing to the other side. Often where it, wisdom, what is God doing, what is God saying? And so I, I just want to just open up with a couple of scriptures. And we, we all know this, Romans chapter 13. And a lot of times we don't want to read these verses right now because <laughs> we're, we're angry. And so or we're, we're, we're just, we just don't understand what's going on. So it just says, let every soul be subject to the governors. This is uh, Romans 13, <clears throat> verse 1. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment to themselves. And so I think there is a place for um, where we would, like people are picketing, mm -hmm. going to the, eh, the Capitol, you know, when yeah. we're, we're angry. And, and I think, I, I think we, we need to be careful because... Do I think powerful people are at play during this time? Of course. Every crisis, there's powerful people mm -hmm. that are going to make money on it. They're going to they're going to use it and leverage it for their for their own uh, cause. And mm -hmm. so, <clears throat> I think we need to be careful that we don't get pulled away from Scripture, get pulled away from what the Lord is asking us to do. And so, there is a section in Acts when uh, Peter and John have been arrested, and in verse 18, chapter four. Uh, it says, so they called them together and commanded them not to speak or to teach in the name of Jesus. And Peter and John answered them and said, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have heard and seen. So they were told not to preach the gospel. Yeah. They were told not to speak in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And they resisted. So were they sinning against the government? Well, yeah. no, because it was, it was a law that was above what God had told them to do. Yeah. And so... I think this is different. Yeah. They're not asking me or any church in America not to preach the gospel, not to worship God. As a matter of fact, I would say we're preaching more now than ever. Agreed. Like we're yeah. our our online presence has been massive mm -hmm. all over the world. Thousands of people on the on the weekends are tuning in so, and people are getting saved. So, they're not asking us not to preach. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're asking us not to gather. And of course, as the pastor of the rock, I want to I don't want to preach to an empty room anymore. It's terrible. And we miss everybody. Of we want course. to see everybody so badly. Of yeah. course. So I, I'm. if I had my way, I would open up uh, last Sunday. Yes. Or yeah. five Sundays ago. <laughs> yes. We thought this was going to be a 15-day period, yeah. if you remember when we talked. That's right. Yeah. And um, so we have done all that we can to honor our, our government and to those in authority. Mm -hmm. And here's my biggest concern. And I don't think a lot of us aren't thinking this way. We're, we're just thinking, not selfishly, but it's we were we were built to worship God together. We yes. were built to gather. But I started thinking about the testimony of our church yes. and the testimony of the name of Jesus, and the very people that we're trying to reach, the very people that we're going after. If we meet, they could perceive us as not caring about them. Mm -hmm. Oh, they That's don't right. care if they make everybody sick. And you know what? Here's the bottom line. This virus isn't going away yep. because of shelter in place. Yeah. It's just not. And when we gather, there's going to be, there's going to be um, trouble. Yeah. There is. People, pe pe there's going to be a little bit of an outbreak. Every time, we're even seeing it now, when a place loosens up, there's more COVID cases. Yep. So it's not eradicating it, yeah. and nor was it ever the intention. Yeah. It was to slow it down. So the expectation that it's going to just go away is is not real. Yeah. And so when we gather, we have to measure that. If people are going to get sick. Yeah, people probably will get sick. But my thing is the very community we're trying to reach, we have to be careful how we 
how they perceive us yeah. because they don't know our hearts and they don't know who we are. And we could inadvertently put a wall between us and them because they could say, look at them. They don't even care about people's health. Well, and our two primary jobs is to love God right. and to love those around us exactly. and to show the love of God to those yep. around us. And Matt, I think that you have a couple scriptures too that you kind of paired with what Pastor Rick was saying. Yeah, and I, I love Romans 13 is, is the main one. But mm -hmm. if you look throughout scripture and you, you do a study on, on Christians relating to government, there's, I mean, I have written down here, one, two, three, four verses in the New Testament mm -hmm. that talk about the theme of honoring government, submitting to authority, mm -hmm. and praying for authority. And, mm -hmm. and 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 2 talks about that. It says, therefore, I exert, I exhort first that all uh, supplications, prayers, and intercessions and givings of thanks be made for all men, for kings and who, all who are in authority, that we may live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. Mm -hmm. And that's just one example of, of the many verses that talk about that. And so I think, I think we need to hold these two uh, uh, things that the Word teaches on government intention. Mm -hmm. um, and on the one hand, submitting and honoring, but on the other hand, having the discernment to say, like, when is um, civil disobedience acceptable? And I, I think everybody's context is different. Sure. And so I think that's the, the essential part of that is we need to take these verses and take our unique context into the place of prayer. Yeah. And we need to not act on the, the hype that's going on and just watching the news and getting stirred up or watching mm -hmm. the rioting or, sure. or the other uh, defiance of the governor's orders and, and then jump on that bandwagon because yeah. if we do, our actions are going to be done out of resentment, hostility, yeah. bitterness, and everything that's contrary to the nature of, of, of a Christian and how we're called to walk. But if we, if we operate by bringing our specific context and your specific context into the place of prayer, I believe the Lord will give us clarity as we seek to honor government mm -hmm. to where maybe he will ask some of us to push back a little bit in certain aspects, you know, yeah. but, but if we, if we, do, if it's birthed out of prayer, it'll be done with that heart of honor of mm -hmm. humility and of wisdom and God's blessing will be on it yeah. um, versus just doing it out of our own flesh. Yeah. Well, and I, and I think those verses are written in a time, if you really think about it, honoring the government. These were governments that were not Christian friendly. Yeah. yeah These exactly. were wicked governments. Yes. This was not like the Christian, they lived in a Christian town. Yeah. yeah. No. And That's I right. think sometimes we think I'll honor when somebody is honorable. Yeah. And yeah. so it, th the problem with that thinking is that we'll only honor those who we like. Mm -hmm. And the Bible doesn't say that. The yeah. Bible doesn't say, you know, honor them if you like them. Yeah. That's right. And so it, it's tough because we're all, you know, we have different mindsets. And as Christians, we look at the word and we look at some some people that are in, in political power and we go, yeah, they don't mm -hmm. represent me. Right. So how do you, how do you yeah. honor, honor those people but not say, well, it doesn't matter what I believe or what you believe and start getting into that, like the frog in the kettle that just mm -hmm. gets cooked. Yep. We have to keep our convictions. Yeah. And, but we do have to honor Right. And and so, I think if if they were asking us to not preach in the name of Jesus, that's different. Over, yeah, yeah. I, I, so I would rebel right now, yep. Yep. and I wouldn't even call it rebellion, yeah. right? No, that's it's not speaking rebellion. truth. Yeah, yeah. I like. But they're asking us not to meet. Yes, right. I like. I like the pers It's all about perspective, and it's all about uh, uh, understanding context in the Bible because. As you said, they were underneath wicked rulership. This is a time when Nero was leading, and they were being persecuted heavily. It's at the end of Paul's, close to the end of Paul's life, not at the very end. And it's in that context that he says, I want you to pray and intercede for kings and all of those who are in authority. And there's no doubt in my mind that the Apostle Paul was thinking about Nero. These are the people who were persecuting Christians. Are we being persecuted right now? No. Uh, are they... Uh, rolling out the red carpet and inviting pastors to the roundtable discussion? No, they're not. So I don't think it's wise, even in that context, to still say, hey, but we have a voice. We do have a voice. And I think, Matt, what you're saying is we need to allow our voice to be heard before the Lord first and yes. foremost yeah. to carry that attitude into uh, our context, our sphere of influence. So. Well, no, I love it. when we were talking before, Billy, you had said something about like if we are called to be one of those that protest in a godly way, you know, but you talked about the sweeping in, like the yeah, caution yeah. of sweeping in. Can you bring that or yeah, talk about I, that? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, 
in the midst of church, quote, civil unrest, I believe that there are some people that God anoints with specific, unique callings. Mm -hmm. uh, part of those specific, unique callings might be to stand up against social injustices. And yeah. so there's a yeah. calling and there's an anointing to bring about political shift as a Christian uh, implementing kingdom principles. Mm -hmm. So I believe some people are called to do that. And so they might go and they might uh, go to like uh, and pick it or they yeah. might uh, gather people together mm -hmm. and, and go and kind of resist a little bit, but it's done underneath the covering of the Lord's anointing. And I think if we're not careful and we don't walk in that calling and in that anointing, I think a lot of Christians can go to those events and get swept by the spirit behind it. Mm -hmm. And usually the spirit behind it's rebellion. Mm -hmm. uh, usually they might go, we might go to like say Sacramento mm -hmm. and it starts off, well, we just wanna love God. But by the time we get there, yeah. the crowd, the bandwagon mm -hmm. and the spirit that they're operating from, a lot of times can sweep us in to that same spirit and so now we're part of the problem of what yes. God's trying to yeah. resolve instead of yes. part of the solution. True. Yes and you had, we had also mentioned you know I love what you said Matt about going in prayer like we, we shouldn't take steps in anything in life without right. going in prayer right. and, and even Billy you mentioned we all have different anointings and what I would say because I've seen it happen is you know if Matt goes in prayer and he feels called to to go in this direction right because yeah. there's an anointing and a call for his life to do Absolutely. that but I go in prayer and God's calling me maybe just to be in prayer for yeah. Matt or for intercession. The, uh, intercession maybe that's what he has anointed me for but what I what I see happen which actually Actually saddens me is that then we become well Matt's looking at me why aren't you coming with me or I'm looking at him why are you going and it shouldn't be that question no. if we see each other That's in right. prayer we know that we have relationships with the Lord and we're hearing and we we support each other in that exactly. and, we, and we help each other yeah, in that. I think we need to be tempered by the voice of God yes and by the Word of God yep. you know I've, I've we've joked about me <clears throat> I if I wasn't a pastor I would probably be a podcast video <laughs> guy, right. and I would just Rick's be rant. ranting and raving <laughs> yeah. all the time about yes. everything because that's kind of how I'm I'm bent. Yes. I'm bent to be a little more like question. I'm, I'm going to question. Yeah. I'm going to push, and so the Lord has to help me because I can go easily to the, you know, we're taking over the world. <laughs> you know, we're going to yeah. we're going to yeah. we're going to pick it and yes. we're going to I'm going to be the governor. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Of Rick's Island, yeah. I'm gonna be the governor. I appreciate so that. Go we have to island. we have to be careful. We have to understand that the Holy Spirit has to. We have to be open to the Holy Spirit tempering us, yes. and the Word of God shaping us, so that we're not just giving ourselves to the every little thing that comes across Facebook. Because yes. there's That's a right. lot on Facebook. Because right? ultimately, yeah. he's more important. His of word course. is more important than our preference and our feelings. Yeah, yeah. Pr prayer and the yes. Word really tethers us to our primary identity as believers, as yes. sons and daughters of God yeah. first, before yeah. any other identity that we have, and we might have other ones, but but that's the core of who we are. And, and when we stay in prayer in the Word, as funny as it sounds that we're always harping on that, this is for a reason, because yes. it keeps us tethered to truth. Yeah. Yeah. And I would just, even even on what Rick said, I would mention and, and highlight that again of just, just being mindful. I mean, I'm one that I actually like watching the news. You know, I yeah. like keeping up on what's going on in the world. But I, I have to be... I have to be careful, and I would caution all of us to be careful to not take on the same tone and cynicism mm -hmm. as a lot of the That's newscasters. So good. Yeah, um, and, and even questions the, uh, are good. Yeah, questions yes. are great. Like I, anybody that says we can't question during this time, oh, totally question authority, question government. Yeah, yeah. that's dangerous. Yeah. Yes, but but you know we just need to be really careful how we represent the Lord to people yes. right now. Because right. at the end of the day, I'm a Christian before I'm an American. Yeah. Yes. That's my identity. Yeah. I love America. I mean, yes. all my family is military. Yeah. And I was in the Navy and for a short time. And, <laughs> but, but, but so there is that. Yeah. that I, I'm, prou I'm proud to be an American. Absolutely. I love America. Yeah. Agreed. But at the same time, I'm a Christian first. first. Yes. Yep. That's my first. Yes. Uh, I, I've got to live to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, and so if they came and said we couldn't preach, we could, then I would be 100% behind yeah. it. So I, I think... We need to kind of move into what are we going to do? Yeah. What, what are we going to do? Because I think we've set the stage of what our spirit should be and how, how we should respond from our heart. Yep. But now what is the rock going to do for meeting again someday? Yeah. And what are we working on behind the scenes right now? Yes. I will say, we, we, if, unless the Lord wakes me up in the middle of the night, 
and says yeah. you're meeting May 31st, we will not be meeting May right. 31st. Right. And I think uh, even as before we kind of uh, dissect that a little bit, yeah. uh, I think all of us, even as a leadership team, we want to validate there's a need in you and the need is fellowship. Yeah. There's a desire in all of us. Mm -hmm. We miss you guys. Yeah. God does call us to gather together. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, there's some people in other countries, they gather together underground. They yeah. gather together yeah. where there's there. it's illegal to be mm -hmm. a Christian. And aren't you thankful yes. that it's not illegal 100%. to be a, a Christian right. in our yeah. country? Yes. Yeah. But given this context, yeah. uh, what, what measures can we do to begin to start thinking about you know, how can we begin to gather yeah. together again? Yeah. Well, well, I think there's two, I think there's two things. And Jen, you can speak to, mm -hmm. you know, the, the home groups, yeah. the prayer room even. I mean, yeah. the, the prayer room's open. Yes. And we have signups where you can, you know, no more than 10 people in our, our sanctuary. You can put a thousand people in our sanctuary. So 10 Social distance is in 20 yeah. feet. <laughs> 10, pe <laughs> yeah. 10 people is like 50 feet. Yeah, exactly. So, if you're, you know, I think that's really important. People, man, fill this place up all day yeah. long uh, yeah. with people praying. But I, I've, I've, I think the way we're gonna roll this out is mm -hmm. we're really gonna listen to the experts, mm -hmm. our, our, because they're over us, the government. But we also have doctors that we've been yes. talking to and getting counsel from. And I've actually looked at the numbers with our doctor mm -hmm. of what's going on in our county and the little spikes we've had and. And so I, we're paying close attention to this. So our our desire is we're actually doing some work on our buildings right now. We're, we're tying our two buildings together, our youth auditorium and our sanctuary with fiber optic lines. We're doing a whole bunch of stuff with new cameras, mm -hmm. kind of trying to trying to get ahead of this curve of online yes. church. And when, when they say, hey, you can come back together in groups of 50, well, we'll be able to have two services of 100. And then when they say you can go back with 100 people, we'll be able to have 200, you know, yes, the two because the buildings yeah. will be connected and there will be LED walls over in the sanctuary, uh, you thought, so it looks good, sounds good. Mm -hmm. So we're working on ways, we're trying to be ahead of the curve for gathering. Um, and, but but I, I, I don't feel the Lord, and I've prayed about it, mm -hmm. I don't feel the Lord saying, get, get with everybody and come back on May 31st. Yeah. Actually, I, I felt... I felt quite the opposite. I felt like the Lord said, you don't have to follow everybody else. Mm -hmm. You need to do, you need to be obedient to what I'm telling you to do. And I'm not going to be moved by a bunch of pastors that I respect and love, mm -hmm. you know, doing this on May 31st. Yeah. Cool, man. Go for it. Yep. This is how we feel. We want to protect our testimony. Mm -hmm. We want to protect right. with our community I want people to know Jesus as their savior. Yeah. I want people to be born again. And the problem is, if we meet, I'm concerned we're gonna send a message to our community that we don't care about them. Yeah. And so that to me is a way bigger issue. And until the Lord lifts that burden off me, of that feeling, yeah. we're, I, you, Billy Graham is not alive anymore. He yeah. could call me from heaven yes. <laughs> and tell me to, to me, and I would still be like, oh, I got to hear from the Lord. Yeah, right? which is so. great, though. I think that we as a congregation appreciate that you do go to the Lord, that you're not mm -hmm. um, going by the wind and waves of the culture around us, but you're saying, yeah. no, Lord, because the Lord's timing is perfect. Terrible. And that's when we as a community... Yeah need to trust that and say, yeah. okay, I trust that the Lord's timing is perfect in all things. And we, just like Billy said, and Pastor Rick said, you know, we understand too, as a leadership team, the importance of community, getting together, seeing other people. It's really the lifeline for our Christian faith to be able to commune together. So together. it is important that you do that right now. That's why we have our rock community groups. We have more of those. You should be signing up for those. They meet in Zoom calls. They're there for each other. They pray for each other. We are talking about, because we know that even if we open in stages, even if we have 50 or 100 or 200 people here, that's still not meeting the needs of what our community was before. Yeah, if we had 200 people meeting, for four 100 services. in this room and yeah. 100 in this room when we had four services, that's half our church. Yeah, so we realize that we're still not going to be able to meet everyone's needs. So we've talked as a team about home churches or viewing parties, you know, so opening up your home to host anywhere from 10 to 20 people where you view the service together, yep. you pray for each other. That's really, you know, we know 
that when you say let's come back together, it is really about that community. So we are trying to find ways to meet that need, but you also have to step out, get involved in those community groups. If you're interested in being one of those home churches, uh, send me a message, jenatheroxca.com, and right. I'll start that process with you. But it's important that that community does exist. Totally. Because we are essential. In fact, we were just talking, you know, clearly we're not six feet apart, and we're going to get someone that asks that. We, <laughs> But we've been working together since this Day has and this, yeah, since this started. So we have had, we've been, um, what, it was 10 people. Yeah, if you're an essential 10. business, less than 10. So we've been honoring that part. Yeah. And uh, and obviously we don't stand and talk to each other this like is this. The this closest, is a moment for this is the and, closest we we get yes. during the week. And it's just for the filming purposes, and then it's done. And yeah. and obviously we honor that. You know, if any of us were not feeling well, right, we wouldn't come in. So no. we're we're doing all of the things required right. and right. asked for by our government. But yeah. um, back to that community, that home church. That and we get we've had several people I'm sure ask you too, and I've seen it posted. Why can't we do a parking lot church? You know, right. and we see those ones that are done and either it's one of two things either they're a small church and it's easy for them to do it or they're a ginormous church and they have all the equipment and they have the setup and they've probably already done something like that sure, before in the past, yeah. where unfortunately for us it is not easy the amount of time yeah. energy and money that it would take to put that together because we'd have to rent equipment and if you if you look at our parking lot we have so many trees yeah. and all the angles of the both. parking lot <laughs> spaces are so wrong there's no way and we've talked so everybody's people have asked if we could rent an AM radio station. Well, that takes time. There's not, yeah. so the amount of time and effort it would take to put that on is just not feasible. But we know that at the root of that, what you're asking for is community. Yeah, and right. so we're going to go back to that. That community is important. So get in a, a rock community group. If you're in that salt crowd or age group, reach out to Jackie and Ken. They're great. They've been having bingo nights and doing other community things. Well, you and, can still see each other. And speaking to the we we even talked about when we come back yeah. having a separate service for people yes. 65 and up. Yeah. yeah. And that doesn't Keep mean them safe. Well, that doesn't mean that if you're older than that you can't come to the regular service. Yeah. Well, we're not yeah. communists, yes. right? We're not going to check your ID. Yeah. But if you do feel like, man, I you know, I have some issues, I'm vulnerable, yeah. we're we're talking about even having a a service just, just for, for them yeah. so yeah. that they feel comfortable. So what yeah. I hear is like two different realms. The first realm is uh, hope we're going to be meeting s sooner than later yes. uh, with the idea of having a uh, church service here at the Rock Campus uh, for a limited amount of people. When the it, government starts talking when we're allowed in that to. direction. Yeah. And then the second element is to have watch group yes. parties at under 10 or 15, yeah. Yeah. Uh, whatever we're allowed. Yep. So there's two different realms uh, that we can look forward to and anticipating. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. and I think that all of us get a little irritated when people say we're non-essential. Oh, yes. Like, yeah. like they're lumping us in with like basketball games, concerts. concerts. Yeah. And God's I'm, like, we're I'm like, we're not, a the the we're not, we're not entertainment. We're no. not a basketball game. No. We're, we're giving people hope and life and we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're fulfilling a purpose that's pretty big. So, of course, I get irritated with that. Yeah. And, but at the same time, we need to honor the Lord. Yes. We need to honor people. And, it, and if any way I felt the Lord say, hey, it's just time to meet. You're just going to do it. I'd do it. Of yeah. course. I would do of it in course. a heartbeat. But I just don't feel the Lord pressing that on me. Mm -hmm. And it's not fear. Yeah. I'm no. not afraid. I go out and do stuff. I go to Costco and I forget my mask and, you know, and everyone gives me dirty looks. And, uh, but I'm not afraid. This has nothing to do with the fear of man yeah. or the fear of a virus. Well, and it's funny because if fear was any, anywhere rooted in what's going on with your communication with the Lord right yeah. now, we would already have opened because True. the fear of not having enough provision would have, would have would have triggered yeah. that opening a long time ago. Like every other yeah. business, this is costing. Yes. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I know there are probably guys that are saying we need to meet cuz we we got to get some 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 yeah. money. Yeah. yeah. Right? And it's comforting to me to know that we have a leadership team and and a senior pastor that doesn't jump on the bandwagon, but actually yeah. seeks the Lord in prayer and waits till he hears the Lord's voice mm -hmm. and until we hear the Lord's voice yeah. as a leadership team. So that's Amen. that's something that personally comforts me a lot. And yeah. our council, our church council yeah. We're meeting this week uh, with them, and for the third time in for the, last the third month. time in the last month, we've <laughs> yeah. met a lot. Yeah, 
Um, and they're on the same page. Yes. They, they, one of our council members is a doctor, so it's yes. really nice to have that perspective mm -hmm. that's not biased, that's not, you know, an, a Facebook post. It's real numbers. So our council is really with wisdom, and I think that's what we need. Mm -hmm. I, you know, wisdom have to, and faith have to move together. Yeah. Yes. They don't move independent of each other. Yeah. And I think people say, well, you just don't have faith to open up. And I'm <laughs> like, well... No, I actually do have faith yes. to open up. But wisdom says mm -hmm. there's a, lots of other things that we have to answer instead of just the one thing yeah. we should open because yeah. the government's trying to control us. And, well, and Rick, can I just say this? A lot of times wisdom masks itself in fear. Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. they say, uh, maybe we should do this, but it's actually fear and they say it's really wisdom. Mm. But I'm thankful that you and all of us are mm -hmm. in agreement. We're not afraid of the virus. We're not afraid of what's actually happening. So we can actually appreciate wisdom uh, for its true essence and yes. not, yeah, not right. have it masked in fear. That's well, right. and I would say it almost takes more faith to wait. Yes. You know, and his word tells us that we're to wait on him. There's a faith in that going, okay, I want to grab and I want to push mm -hmm. ahead, but you're telling me to wait. So there's a faith in that waiting, well, which well, hard. Is, is hard. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, th this is just known across the yeah. board, but when you get together with pastors in the mm -hmm. pastor's conference, the first thing everybody asks is, how many people come to your church? Yeah. And what is how it? much money do you bring in? Yes. Right? <laughs> it's, it's so weird to me that that's always the first question. Yeah. I, I can't stand that. Yeah. I, I think that we have to be careful mm -hmm. because I I know I know what some pastors are thinking. Man, if we don't open and then that church opens, yeah. what if my people go to yeah. that church because yeah. they went first? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I'm like, well, first of all, that is a horrible way to process yes. this. Second of all, then your people weren't with you in the first place. Yes. That's yeah. right. They're not part of the church. Part you were just yeah. you were their speaker that yes. they listened to on Sunday. Yep. They're not part of the family. If people can be can be swayed and moved by yep. The, the coolness of that or the greatness of the speaker or yeah. slurping machines in the lobby, <laughs> then right. come on, that, that, that's not, those aren't soldiers for Christ, exactly. right? Those are just the yeah. tenders that are looking for the next hot thing. Yep. We're a family and we have to, we have to process this yes. as a family Yes. and with the Lord mm -hmm. and with his word, we're not process, I'm not processing this with what guys are doing in LA. No. 3,000 churches opening. No. I don't care what they do. Right. Giddy up, baby. If the yes. Lord's speaking to you, go do it. <laughs> because you're going to have a conversation with the Lord one day, and he's yeah. going to say, I told you exactly. this. And so, yeah, it's exactly. good, and we appreciate that. And yeah. I think yeah. to kind of sum up, and e or even to figure out, now, what do we... What do we communicate to yeah, our... How do we go? Where yeah, do we go do, from here? What do we do as Christians? How are we supposed to respond? I think to tie a little bow on the whole conversation, because ultimately we are family. We are all representing Christ. If you yeah. declare yourself as a Christian, right. people in your neighborhood, people on Facebook, people everywhere, if you've said it, they're watching you to Absolutely. see how do you respond. So, and I know, I th Matt, I think you had a couple scriptures yeah. to share about just how do we respond as Christians in this season? Yeah, well, I was thinking about that in the social media age and just seeing so many posts, even from believers, yeah. um, about a lot of different things that they're very passionate about. Yeah. And I think that's fine. Like me um, about masks. <laughs> <laughs> You yeah, always yeah. temper with more of like a question, like, uh, <laughs> you know, right, like, right. Huh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but but I think people are, are prone to to post in a reactionary kind of way, mm -hmm. and I think what Jen said hits the nail on the head. That that primarily we we're meant to be representatives of Christ to our spheres of influence, mm -hmm. right? And so if we get wrapped up in what's going on in the news or even conspiracy theories online, mm -hmm. whether you believe them or not, it's not the point. It's that if we get wrapped in wrapped up in them and start posting them and espousing them online in a frequent way, um, I think that could that can hinder our witness for Christ mm -hmm. and take away from the the, the primary uh, focus, which is to to lead people closer to Christ. Um, and to lead people to Jesus that don't know him in the first place. That's and, right. So That's I love right. these two verses, um, and then I'll pass it off. I love uh, James 1.19. It says, So then, my beloved brethren, let every person be swift to hear, slow mm -hmm. to speak, and slow mm -hmm. to become angry. And then it says, mm -hmm. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So that speaks wow. to that getting yeah. stirred up yeah. by things going on in our world right now. But number two is this, Proverbs 10.19. It says, In the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. 
but he who restrains his lips is wise. Yeah. Yes. So I'm not saying there's not a time to speak, but I am, uh, and what these verses are getting at is just using that discernment and wisdom, especially on social media, but in your conversations with your spheres of influence. Yeah, I've yeah. had to delete some posts. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put something up, and if people start arguing yeah. in my post, yeah. I just like, delete cool. it. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, okay, I'm, I'm not going to create that. And, and we don't want to become a stumbling block. Yes. Uh, the scripture warns us not to be a stumbling block, but at the same time, we don't operate in the fear of man. And so the, the, yeah. we don't, none of those, we, we resist both of those. So yeah. I, like, I like how the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness yeah. of God. And that's what a lot of people are feeling right now. Yes. So just know, church, that we're behind the scenes, mm -hmm. working on ways to meet yes. that are coming. Yes. And, and we're going to be prepared and ready for when that trigger gets pulled. We're going to do it in a wise way. We're going to do it in an honoring way. Yeah. And because um, I, want, I want the Lord to be pleased with how mm -hmm. we deal, deal with this. Yeah. And frankly, I, we have a mayor in our town. We mm -hmm. have a chief of police in our town. Yeah. We have, and I love them. I've yeah. met them. And I... I, I do want to honor them. Yeah. Now, if they say the church can never meet again, different story. That's a different story. Yeah. But they're yeah. not saying that. They're not. They're not asking that of us. So I think we need to get perspective. Yeah. yeah. Gain some. Gain some. And if you're really freaked out, maybe shut that Facebook off for a couple yeah. weeks. Yeah. And yeah. you know the news, and just kind of get yourself to a place where you are mindful yes. of what God is doing and saying. You have the mind of Christ instead of the mind. Because I, you know, I'm with you guys. I could go to battle and, you know, the First Amendment, yes. and, and I believe in it. Yes, I, absolutely. And, and if they go much longer, th yes. then they might find me yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. pushing <laughs> yeah. back against yes. that. Right. So, But God will tell you to do that. Absolutely. And, and I, as you were talking, the thing that I thought of, I want to encourage you, be praying for us. Yeah, uh, you know, that God keeps pouring out and, and that we hear his voice. Be praying for <laughs> yes. our government. Like, yeah. this is where we have influence and impact you know yep. we tend to think that we have to use our voice and we have to do something but a lot of times god's saying i just i want you to come to me that's i'm right. the one that's yeah. going to handle this not you so right. be praying yeah yeah okay season. so we will uh we'll keep everybody updated as the as it moves forward i'm uh i'm hopeful that yes. things will change as the warm weather comes yes dr john's even said that that warm weather's good it yeah. starts to knock knock it down and uh and I think as a church, we just need we need to stay before the Lord mm -hmm. yeah. and That's hear right. Him and believe that this virus is going to be eradicated. Yeah. Yes. It's going to be the Lord that does it. Yeah. And um, I, I seriously would love to meet this weekend. Uh, there's nothing more painful yeah. than preaching to an empty sanctuary. That's right. I think also, like, if we go with doing how we're going to do the rollout, yeah. Yeah. it also sets us up. So if it does come back, at we're least at least all of our rock groups, yeah. our community groups are we're in ready. flow. Home churches, we're we're going. ready. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. good yeah. preparation. It is good. It is. All good. right, I'm gonna pray for us. Great. And then we're gonna move on with our evening. Yep. Father, we thank you. I pray for every person that's watching, Lord, that they would um, they would know you deeper, Jesus. Those who do know you that their relationship with you would grow and those that don't know you, yes. that even in this moment, they would just cry out to you. And Father, we just, we want to honor you. We, your name, Lord, is in our lives. We, we, we are a representation of who you are. So God, help us to have wisdom. Help us to know when to act and how to act. And Father, I pray that you would eradicate this virus. Yes. And God, if there is men behind the scenes trying to do things that are corrupt, I ask you to expose that. Yes. And I ask you, Lord, to, to eradicate that too. Yes. Father, we love you. We trust you. We know that you're doing a good work. And we want to follow you through this whole thing with a heart that's after you. We love you. Bless your people. Comfort them. God, give them grace and peace. We pray for, for a radical provision mm -hmm. for their personal lives, yes. for those who have lost jobs, that you would cover and protect them. God, would you bring provision financially to yes. them and to the Rock Church so that we yes. can continue to do what you've asked us to do. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thanks for joining us.